Hi, my name is Robert. Please read the comments in the about section of this video. It has valuable information and updates. My YouTube channel has a disclaimer video that I encourage you to watch. And please like, share, and subscribe. I hope you find what you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. I'm now going to make a special video for the people that keep asking me what they can do to get the timing back on after the car throws the timing belt and they put it back together. Well, if you have a interference engine, which all of these white block Volvos are, 850s, 960s, S40s, V40s, uh, XC90s, blah, blah, on and on. And if you have any other kind of vehicle that has an interference engine, you just can't put a timing belt back on there, put it in time, and expect the car to run. Reason why? The valves have been bent, the head is destroyed, and if you try it enough times, you may have even destroyed some pistons. Here I have an engine block that the cylinder head has been removed from. It has uh, pistons in different positions. What you need to know is, at some point, each piston becomes top of its stroke which some people call top dead center, and that happens for every cylinder in the car. This is a five-cylinder engine. So when this piston is all the way up, the valves on that cylinder need to be closed so that they don't contact the piston. When your timing belt is properly installed and the cams in the head are all hooked up, all of this stuff is synchronized so that when your piston comes up, your valves are closed, causing compression, allowing for your firing to happen in your car to run. If this timing belt comes off while the engine is running, 99 times out of 100, the car has engine piston to valve contact and the valves are bent. That's if you have an interference engine. If you want to know if the engine in your car is an interference engine, go to a website that sells timing belt parts, like Parts Geek or something like that. Try to order timing belt parts and it will have a notation whether or not the engine is of the interference clearance type. If it's an interference engine and that timing belt breaks while that car is running or it comes off the cam or it comes off the water pump or an idler breaks or a tensioner breaks and that car loses time, those valves are damaged and the car will no longer run properly until that head is rebuilt. Here's an example of a website that will let you know if you have an interference motor. This is Parts Geek. PartsGeek.com. You come here, you enter in your year model. I'm going to enter in 1999. I'm going to select Volvo. If I could get down that far. I'm going to select C70. That's a white block engine. I'm going to click search for parts. You go engine mechanical right there. Once you hit that, the next page, you should be able to find timing belt. You click timing belt right there. And then up here, you see it says interference engine. I'm going to go back to the home page. And I'm going to choose my 1990 Volvo make Volvo two forty search parts engine mechanical over here then I'm gonna arrow down up oh, right there is timing belt and as you can see this one is a interference engine 
The next one is not. They have two different heads for these cars. Some are interference, some are not, depending on how many valves it has. So, you want to see if your vehicle, when you find the right part, if it's interference or not. Most of these are not interference. This one is an interference. Doesn't show you exactly why, but there's two different cylinder heads on some of these cars. So if you got a question, you could call your dealership and ask them, or you can get online and check it on a parts website. It may tell you if it's interference or not. But if it's interference, there's no forgiveness in jumping the timing belt. So, let's say, for instance, that the car jumped time and it stalls. Your first knee-jerk reaction is going to be to try to restart it. If you try to restart it and this timing belt is not on everything properly, the engine is out of sync, the pistons will come up and collide with open valves thus doing more damage or confirming and finishing off the damage that was done when the timing jumped. So, if you had a car jump time, it stalled, you try to start it, there is no need to contact me because I'm just going to tell you the same thing. Your car jumped time, it's an interference engine, it's over. Stop wishing, hoping, praying, guessing, spending any other time on trying to get that car to run short of pulling that head off and replacing it with a good head or replacing all the bent valves in that head. There's no ands ifs about it, about it people. If the vehicle has an interference engine, damage is done. I am contacted almost daily with people that for some odd reason didn't make sure that their timing belt service was complete. The timing belt came loose. Either teeth came out of the belt, the belt broke, the water pump seized, the tensioner seized, the idler seized, and all of a sudden the car jumped time. The car stalled or it won't start. If it won't start, you check for compression. If you have no compression, it's over. The head needs to be repaired or replaced. Now, I get no joy or pleasure of being the bearer of this bad news. However, it does you no good and me no good to pussyfoot around with the facts. So when you call me, it's going to be quick, cold, and simple. The head is damaged. The head is destroyed. Don't spend time replacing the water pump, replacing the tensioner, idler, belt. It's all a waste of time and waste of money. What you need to be doing is focusing that time on getting that head off so you can get it replaced, getting it to a shop so they can do it for you, or just cutting bait and calling a wrecker and parting the car out, selling it for spare parts, or just getting it crushed at the salvage yard. I, I wish I had better news. I simply don't. Here is the cylinder head that I just pulled off of that block. What I'm going to do now is set the cams back in place. I'm going to draw the head down with the cam drawdown tools. And I'm going to let you see how far the valves open up when this stuff is in synchronization and the valves open at whatever position. I put in the head drawdown tools. This will simulate the head be pretty much being installed with all the screws down. So I'm going to show you the bottom of this cylinder head so you can see the valves open and close at pretty much time position. This is very close to being timed. Looking at the bottom of the head, it looks like the valves on number one cylinder are closed. Number two has exhaust valves, I'm sorry, intake valves open. Number three looks like intakes 
and exhaust are open a little bit. Number four, intake valves are open. Number five, exhaust valves are open. Now if you look on the angle, these are actually going to protrude out. That is protruding out there. So I'm also going to turn it, see if I can open them any wider than they are. I'm going to turn the uh, cams. At this position, I got an intake valve probably all the way open. You see how far they stick out from the bottom of the head? If that piston is all the way up, it's going to hit. There's no ands, ifs, or buts about it. Even here, you can see where the piston on the one that broke came up and hit the bottom of the head. I'm going to try to get an exhaust valve open a little more than that. At this position, an exhaust valve is all the way open, and you can see how much they protrude into the piston area. Just a little bit, but that little bit is enough for it to bend the valves. Now, these valves are actually bent. You really can't tell, but they are. If I pour coolant in through that hole, the coolant will leak out because those valves made contact with the piston when the rod broke. Another thing you have to understand and know, when this car is running and you're going at a thousand revolutions per minute at idle, this is turning two full revolutions. So if you're driving down the road at 2,000 RPMs, this is turning 4,000 times. 4,000 times divided by 60, I don't know what the magic number is, but if this belt breaks, it's going to have a centrifugal force, and now all that part is going to continue to turn for a second or two. That second or two is enough time for that piston, or all of those pistons, to come up let's just say 30 times to make contact with the valves and bend them. So, there is no escaping this. If you have an interference engine and this car jumps time, there's no way of telling. If the car stalls, it's over. If you try to start it, it's really over. Do yourself a favor and get your timing belt serviced with good quality parts. That brings me to another point of this video. When you replace your timing belt, your water pump, your tensioner roller, or your idler, do not use cheap, inexpensive eBay parts. You need to find the best quality parts you can find so that when you have this service done, it doesn't fall apart before the schedule. The schedule on my car is 70,000 miles. The schedule on most cars is 100,000 miles. If you don't get parts that are quality enough to last 10 years or that 100,000 miles, you are going to be sadly sitting on the side of the road with a busted timing belt situation. I have talked to numerous people that got a full timing belt kit off of eBay for $70. They're excited. They're happy until two years into it and 30,000 miles later. One of these parts break and the timing is thrown and you're sitting there with a blown motor. It just doesn't make any sense. Spend the two or three hundred dollars on OEM dealer parts or the good quality equivalent. That way you're not stuck with a bad busted timing belt. That's all I got. Hope it helps. If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.